Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, we are going to talk about three phase inverter operating in 180 degree mode. This is a circuit diagram of a three phase inverter. Inverters are basically devices that are used to convert DC to AC. However, in, in this case, it will be converting DC to three phase AC and hence the name three phase inverter. The reason why it's called as 180 degree mode of operation is because each and every switch that is used will be conducting for a period of 180 degree mode. So uh, the waveforms looks like this. Uh, each and every thyristors are triggered in this particular fashion. 5, 6, 1 initially are uh, turned on and then 6, 1, 2 and then 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5 and 4, 5, 6. So uh, every uh, switching pattern changes for 60 degree. However, each thyristor will be conducting for a period of 180 degree. Hence, uh, it is called as 180 degree mode of operation. The reason why I am showing you the waveforms is because this is the pattern of output waveform that we are supposed to get in MATLAB. So once you have a clear picture of this, let's uh, look into the important portion with respect to uh, our circuit that is nothing but the design so we are taking the supply voltage to be 24 volt so the rms value of line voltage is given by uh, the formula v line is equal to 0.8165 vs that is equal to 19.5 volt uh, to determine the rms value of phase voltage v phase is equal to v line by root 3 that is equal to 11.25 volt so one of the most important aspects uh, uh, is to enter the uh, value of the firing angle in seconds so how do we do it in uh, reality we'll be talking firing angles with respect to uh, degrees but how do we convert that into seconds so this is a simple example uh, the frequency is chosen to be 50 hertz therefore time period is given by the reciprocal of frequency that is 0.02 seconds for 360 degree it corresponds to 0.02 seconds however 180 degree it is half of it that is 0 0.01 seconds therefore every degree corresponds to 5.55 uh, into 10 power minus 5 seconds so each of these uh, thyristors that is thyristor 1 is triggered at uh, 0 seconds and uh, thyristor uh, 3 is triggered at 120 degree and this is the value that we have to enter we will be multiplying it with the factor that is there similarly we will do it for thyristor 5 4 and 6 and at last uh, thyristor 2 so we are conducting we are uh, however using mosfets as switches in uh, uh, the matlab it is because we don't uh, uh, need any commutation circuit to turn off thyristor which is again complicated so let's get started all right here we are so let's click on simulink library browser and search for the blocks that are required so in this case we will be requiring power view that is the essential block with respect to simulation to take place we need a voltage measurement block we also need a dc voltage uh, source block so search for dc voltage and you'll be getting this so add this block once this is done we need mosfet switches uh, so search for mosfet scroll a little down and add this block as well so we need a pulse generator to trigger these mosfets so search for pulse you will be getting pulse generator right at the top once this is done we also need a series rlc uh, three phase load so search for series rlc you'll be getting it over here add this block as well once that is done uh, we will be requiring uh, mean and rms value but uh, in this case we are only concerned about rms value search by mean will be getting both but we'll be adding only rms value be very careful we are not using this rms value because it's used in dsp system analysis we'll be adding this rms value once this is done uh, we will be requiring a display uh, to display the magnitude of voltage that we are getting so search for display you will be getting this block add this block we also need a scope to check the waveform so, so, so add scope as well so we also need a ground in order to measure the voltage with respect to phase so search for ground be very careful we have to add this ground so once this is done we'll be placing them in appropriate positions so that we can get started with the circuit connections all right, so uh, we'll be rotating this in the upward direction and uh, we'll be disabling measurement port because we're not using it. Copy paste this um, and then we'll be placing it in appropriate positions. Copy paste these two together. We'll be requiring six MOSFETs. So we'll be placing them in this particular fashion. Uh, once this is done, we, we will be requiring six pulse generator. Before that, uh, we'll set the common parameters that are supposed to be in everything. That is 0 0.02 seconds with respect to the time period and 50% uh, pulse that is each and every thyristor should be on for 180 degree and uh, rest of 180 degree they should be off so click on ok and once this is done copy paste this we need them across each and every switches that are there so place them in appropriate positions so we'll be placing them uh, just adjacent to the switches that are there so once this is done we'll be connecting uh, them according to the circuit connections that is the sources are short circuited uh, be very careful with uh, the fashion in which these mosfets are connected they should be in this particular fashion uh, often if you are connecting them in the opposite direction then you tend to make a mistake so i'll be connecting it in this particular fashion a dc supply is connected across these two points 
connect them as well uh, a series rlc load is to be connected across uh, phase a b and c i'll be connecting at these three points so once this is done um, i'll be connecting uh, these pulse generator block to the gate terminals so uh, each of them are to be triggered at different instance that's the reason why we're using six different pulse generator blocks so once uh, this is done we'll be entering the parameters the dc voltage source should be 24 volt i'll be setting that up uh, with respect to uh, these according to our design the phase relay should be 6.66 into 10 power minus 6 any doubts with respect to this feel free to reach out to me so again for uh, thyrist uh, for mosfet 5 we'll be uh, setting the phase delay to be 0 0.01332 seconds so once this is done with respect to 4 we'll be setting it up to 9.99 into 10 power minus 3 so i'll be entering that 9.99 into 10 power minus 3 so once that is done click on okay um, and then uh, we'll be uh, setting the phase delay as 0 0.01 one six six five over here and the phase delay with respect to this is um, 3.33 into 10 power minus 3 so once this is done click on ok we have entered all the parameters uh, so we need to measure both phase and uh, line voltage so I'll be copy pasting this over here uh, and we also need uh, another RMS value block so copy paste that as well one of the most important steps is to uh, change the fundamental frequency to 50 Hertz because the values uh, might change with respect to our design consideration so uh, once this is done we will be measuring the phase voltage uh, with respect to E and then with respect to ground uh, we can do it for the other uh, values as well so line voltage with respect to E and then with respect to B uh, so I'll be connecting these to the RMS value blocks. I'll be connecting this portion to the output uh, voltage and uh, another sc another scope can directly be used to connect multiple waveforms all together and uh, I will be requiring another uh, display block. I'll be connecting them in this particular fashion. So once this is done, I'll set the simulation time to one second because these are static loads and click on run. So now if you carefully observe, we're getting the voltages exactly to be the same with respect to our design procedure. Uh, let's look at the waveform also to check uh, and confirm uh, with respect to the output that we're getting. So we'll be looking at uh, two the, these two waveforms in a separate uh, fashion. So we can zoom that we're getting three phase, but it is a square wave because of the fact that we're not using any filters in order to convert the square wave oscillations into uh, sinusoidal one, but we can also use that. So this is exactly what the type of waveform that we are supposed to get. I hope you have understood the concept behind this and uh, how to simulate in MATLAB. So if you like this video, please do like it and share it. Uh, subscribe to our channel for regular updates. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out with any questions and concerns you may have. Thanks for watching this video.